Hi, welcome back to the Photoshop Training Channel.com. I'm Mitsuz Ramirez. In this video, I'm going to show you how to identify fonts from an image so that you can use them in your designs. This is going to be a complete guide on using the match font feature in Photoshop. I will divide this tutorial into three easy digestible steps so that you can follow along no matter your skill level. First, you will learn the basics of how match font works. Then we will work with a difficult image and I will show you several tips and tricks to make it work with match font and get better results. And finally, I will show you how to perform the search directly on Adobe Typekit, which gives you more options in Photoshop and it's a tool that I'm using more and more every day. Make sure that you stick around until the end of the tutorial since that's when I will be showing you the unknown tricks and features. Okay, let's get started. Let's start with a simple example so that I can show you how the match font tool works. I'm sure that you've come across this problem before. You're working on a design and you need to use the font found in a photo. This could be a client's logo or simply a font that you found walking around the street and you took a photo of it. In the olden days, finding a font could have been a difficult task, but now you can let Photoshop do all the hard work and let it identify the font for you. I have a photo with the word recycle. And if I wanted to work on a design using this font, I need to find it first, of course. To do so, go into type and select match font. This brings up the match font window here on the right, and you're going to see the results populate here. The first thing that I need to do is make sure that the crop area is selecting a single line of text. So I'm going to click and drag these handles. Make sure that you closely crop the selection to the left and right edges of the text. Once you do so, you will notice that Photoshop will start populating a list of fonts that are found both on your computer and on Adobe Typekit. If you look at the icons here, you can see the type of fonts that we're working with. The green TK icon are the fonts found in Adobe Typekit. If you don't have the Adobe Typekit fonts installed on your computer, then you can click on them to download them into your computer. In this case, I'm simply going to select the Rockwell regular font, press OK. Then if I select the type tool, you can see that Rockwell is the font that is selected. I can simply click and I'm going to click on the left align button and I'm going to type the word recycle. Notice that this font is very similar to the font found on the photo. It's not 100% identical. You have to keep in mind that Match Font searches for fonts on both your computer and Typekit, and it's going to give you the closest match to what it finds. In some cases, you will not be able to find the font that is a 100% match. So use the closest font available. In the next example, I'm going to show you what to do with a difficult image. Sometimes you may be working with a client and you ask them for their logo and they send you something like this where the photo is not very good, it's on an angle, and Photoshop won't be able to find the font. So for example, if I go and do the same steps, go into type, match font, and then try to make a selection of that font, you will see that Photoshop's match font feature will not be able to give us the fonts that are closely related to the font that I've selected. You can see the example here. None of those fonts are similar to the fonts found on the sign. So instead, we need to adjust the image to make sure that Photoshop can recognize the font. All the steps that I'm going to take in the next example are not always necessary, but I'm going to show them to you anyway so that you can try them on your photo in case you're having issues. So the first thing that we're going to do is make sure that we have a straight and a correct perspective on the image before we choose match font. So to correct the perspective, I'm going to click on the crop tool and nested under it, we have the perspective crop tool. So I can click on this corner here to create this line. I'm following the edge of the red awning. I'm going to click on that corner, come to this corner and go up and I'm trying to match the perspective as best as I can. Then I can click and drag on these points to adjust the perspective. If I click and drag and scale in perspective and the lines still match, that means that I got the perspective right. So I'm just 
clicking and dragging notice how here the edge of the end matches the perspective so it looks like i have the perspective right on the right hand side and i'll do the same thing for the left and it looks like it matches as well so what i'm going to do now is scale this in so that i can select the word arc that is the font that i'm trying to match once I have that selected, I can simply click on this check mark or press the enter key. That's return on the Mac to commit the changes. And notice how we remove the perspective from that photo. And now it seems as if we're looking at the text head on. If you didn't know about the perspective crop tool and you enjoyed this tip, go ahead and click on that like button now. And by the way, if you want to learn another great trick that I came up with with the perspective crop tool, check out my tutorial on placing anything in perspective non-destructively. It's a great video that I'm sure that you would like. I'll place a link right below in the description. But anyway, in some cases, the quality of the photo may not be the best, so you may need to adjust it. Something that I like to do is press Control shift u that's Command-Shift-U on the Mac, to desaturate the image. We're removing the color from it. Then I can invert the colors. So anything that is white will become black, and anything that is black will become white. Control I, that's Command I on the Mac to invert. So now we have a white background with dark text. What I want to do is make the background completely white and the text black. So I can go into Image Adjustment Levels and adjust the black point, move it to the right to make the darker pixels darker, then click and drag the white point and move it to the left to make the brighter pixels brighter. Something like that. Then press OK. In some cases, you may need to use the Dodge and Burn tools. So I can select the Burn tool and target the shadows. The Burn tool makes pixels darker. So I'm telling Photoshop that with this tool, I'm going to burn or make pixels darker, but only affect the dark ones. So I can come in here and start painting on this K and notice I'm making the K darker, but I'm not affecting the background. And I can also work on the R as well. Then I can select the Dodge tool and tell Photoshop that I'm only going to affect the highlights. Maybe I'll increase the exposure to create a stronger effect. Then I can paint over the letter A to make those pixels brighter. And for the edge there, I can just select the Brush tool, make sure that white is my foreground color, and I can just paint. And again, you don't have to do this with every image. I'm just showing you in case that you need to do that with your image. Then I can go back into Image Adjustment Levels and do that contrast adjustment once again. Then press OK. So now that we have defined the text like so, I can go into Type, Match Font, and I'm just going to click and drag the corner handles there so that they select the text. Photoshop now is going to search for those fonts and I get much, much better results. Now I'm going to press cancel and that's because we're going to move on to the third section of this tutorial where I'm going to use Typekit instead of Photoshop. So now that I have this graphic, I'm just going to save it. So you can just go into File, Export, Save for the Web Legacy, then click on Save and you can just save it anywhere that you like. I'm going to save it in this folder. Then go into the Typekit website, and the Typekit website is typekit.com, and this is what it looks like. And in this website, we can look at all the fonts found in Adobe Typekit, and we can even search with an image. So you can click on this camera icon or simply drop a file on this box so that the Typekit website could scan it. And I'm going to use the ARC starter file that we just saved. I'm going to load it into the website. Typekit will scan it and there it is. If you need to, you can adjust the crop handles. In this case, I don't need to. I'm just going to click on Next Step. Then you can make sure that the text here at the bottom actually reads what's on top. In this case, it really didn't do that good of a job, but that's okay. You can just type in the word ARC and I'll click on Next. Then I'll scroll down and you can see the results. The reason that I like using this website is because I can also increase the size of the font. And notice how I'm using the text that I typed in that previous screen. So I can actually compare it to the text that I have. Unlike in Photoshop. In Photoshop, you don't get a preview like this. And also you just saw me increase and decrease the size of the text. 
Also, I can come in here and just change the word to something else to see what it would look like. So I'm going to type the word arc and I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to look for the one that most closely matches the logo from the restaurant. And in this case is the one at the very top. Notice how I was able to find the exact font from that awning on that restaurant by using Adobe Typekit. The font is called Brush Script Standard Medium and I can simply click on Sync. Then it will sync onto my Creative Cloud account and you can see that notification. It has been synced. So I can go back into Photoshop, create a new layer, disable the background, select the type tool and find the font that I just synced into the Creative Cloud. And here it is. Brush Script Standard. If you can't find it, it might be easy if you click on this icon, which only shows you the Typekit fonts and you will see it right there. Brush Script Standard. So I'll click on it and I'll just make sure that black is my foreground color. Click and type the word arc. Then I'll commit the changes. Then press Control T, Command T to transform. And I'm going to click and drag on the corner handle while holding Shift to scale up and not distort the text. I'll commit the changes again. And as you can see, this is exactly the text that was used in the awning. And by the way, let me know down in the comments below if you found this tutorial useful. Also, if this is your first time at the Photoshop training channel, don't forget to click on that subscribe and notification buttons. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you at the next tutorial.